And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters, <coughs> sorry, of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me is a newcomer into the temple, coming to us straight from Quest Nest and creators of the Divine Forge campaign, the one and only Frank Simons. How are you doing today, man? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. How are you? How are you? I, am do I am doing good. It is... It is still... It is still in is still snowy as all is still snowy as all hell. Um but it isn't it but it isn't as bad as it could be. <laughs> uh I mean I'm on, I'm only up it's not like I'm up to my ankles in in snow or anything like that. Well that's good. For us we have rain, so I'm I'm not sure which one I prefer actually. Um well, at least with snow, I get free ammo to hassle my roommate. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, I'd like to start at the humble beginnings, in a sense. Walk me through your first introduction to role-playing game and what made it stick. Interesting question. Um, so, what happened is that, I don't know, I, I keep saying... One year ago, and then I realized it's three years ago, and then I realized it's even it's even longer. So uh, I was actually just looking for a game where you uh, not like chess, where you where you have a winner and a loser, but you can play with friends and you can collaborate. Um, so I started off the only thing that I actually can imagine, which was the internet, and then I figured, uh, well, let's give it a shot. And the the, the game which said most collaborative was actually D and D. Obviously, I heard of it, and uh, but I didn't have any image with it whatsoever. So I decided to give it a shot, and my friends were were also willing to give it a shot. We always play different kinds of games, board games, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, next thing I know, we were I think we started at three in the afternoon, and we finished at three in the morning because it took us about six or seven hours to figure out a character. Um, and because we were all new, and after that we 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 kind of fell in love with the game. I started playing a ton of one shots. Uh, I played in three different campaigns, I believe. I have uh, actually started jamming or DMing uh, several campaigns myself. So yeah, I I got hooked to say the least, uh, and then started watching a lot of other content on, on different channels to see how other people played it and got some ideas and um, try to be a better GM that way. Mm -hmm. Now, with with that in mind, when it, com when it comes to the Divine Forge, is that, from what I've seen, this is the this is the this is the second module that you get that you guys have developed. Oh. Yes. Now, with now on the Kickstarter page itself, you talk you talk about it being um you talk about it being G about it being GM friendly. Um, what exactly do you what exactly do you mean by that in comparison to other adventures that you've that you've ru that you've run or have seen have seen in the past? So what I noticed is is when well. A lot of people know the, the, the starter set, for example, you know, the, the Lost Mines. Um, and in there, there's a Green Dragon, which is actually uh, our sheer luck that it's also in, in this adventure that we're currently having live. But um, for from when I tried to run it with my players, um, they wanted to have more lore, more information, more uh, connections with the NPCs and... Um, for me, as a new DM I, or GM, I didn't know how to, where to get that all that information from. I didn't know exactly how to involve my player backstory or how to, to scale an encounter or to figure out any strategies for a goblin, so to say. And because of that, I 
I had to do a lot of research and, and work uh, myself up front, and I love doing that. But I realized as well that in that search, a lot of other people don't. So uh, the amount of hours that I spend in order to prepare this this uh, session, um, uh, my my wife at some point she just said, "Why don't you try to you know." sell it to other people and see whether they are interested. And that's how I started off with Questness. Mm -hmm. Does that answer a little bit of your question? Yeah. Now with the given the given the size of the thing, um, uh, would you say would 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 you say that this is more of a micro setting than a um than a adventure? So um, let's say you, you, you focus on one location in itself. And I f believe in the sample PDF, I have uh, the village of Amiga in there. Mm -hmm. And um, on, in that village, there is a challenge, an encounter. There's something happening. Mm -hmm. um, and we provide inside the book a challenge regarding this. And I believe it's already in, in, the, in the sample as well. There's uh, mechanics regarding large-scale war, but there's also lore that's involved or uh, possibilities that could happen, which which we take into account to help the, the, the dungeon master run the game. So, in, in essence, there is, yes, they could play the entire adventure inside the Ketza Kingdom, mm -hmm. which is the world in itself and involve or include all the lore and ability checks or whatever. However, I've had people playing it in a Feyran or an Aberon or whatever else setting they, they would want, their homebrew setting, and they just focused on the location, still kept the challenges, still kept the monsters, and and most of the loot as well, they just changed the, the lore of it to their own world. But because I gave some ability checks in the tables, to say, oh, if, if they're all, if they're interested and they see a shrine, well, they're all a DC 12 on whatever, then they might be able to get to know this and this and this and this about the world. So you can dose a little bit of the the uh, the world lore, which is obviously the fun part for the DM, but I have a few players who, that are interested in that as well. So I always take them into account. Now, with that with that in mind, one of the things I did find in, I did find interesting is an emphasis on factions. Yeah. With, uh, could you, I'd like you to give me the skinny on on the on the um, let's see what was the number on the four factions? Sorry, I just want I just wanted to make sure I didn't overcount. Mm -hmm. um, within within the within the setting that you've created. Yeah, so the entire world itself obviously has more factions and guilds. Uh, but if I throw everything at once at my players, they get confused. So what happens is that every single book or main story arc or however you want to call it, uh, involve, you, you deliver a little bit more factions or guilds. And uh, what happens is you have several good deities and several well, bad ones. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, people that strongly relate to that deity, they cluster together and then they form a faction. Or for some people, for some worlds, it could be a guild or something like that. Uh, in, in this one, it's it's called a faction, and because of that, um, it's it's fun for my players to say, "Oh, he's wearing." this or this type of, of clothing, or he is carrying this sigil on his chest or on his piece of armor or on, on around his neck as a, as a holy symbol. I believe in that same one. So we have something in common and then they instantly are more immersed into the world because they are not alone. And they feel like, oh, I can, I can talk to this person while he or she isn't necessarily the face of the group, which also gives them an opportunity to to role play a little bit more, uh, despite not, you know, uh, well, role play a little bit more, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So now with the, now taking taking that into account, you went through you 
you went with the with um six to nine th as the level range for the adventure. Um, yes. Even even with that, do do you plan on having anything in there to su to support kind of um poten potential seeds at potential seeds after the fact? Oh, for sure. So the the first uh, book that we present was level three to six. Uh, this one is level six to nine, and I'm planning to go further uh, to nine to twelve, and then we'll see a little bit from there. Obviously, I have a lot of ideas still to a lot of for a lot of different books, but um, just taking it one book at a time is already enough. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, what could happen is there are some hooks relating to the, the next book. Yeah, for sure, that, that's possible. Yeah. Now, something else that something else that I found interesting in both the both the preview do document and on the Kickstarter page itself is you putting in rules for um, large scale battle mechanics, which is an amusing bit of timing because a few days ago I was talking about my disappointment with. Uh, Wizards of the Coast, because even after all these years, they still haven't supported mass battle rules. <laughs> <laughs> that is convenient for the timing, yeah. <laughs> so, how how exactly do, how exactly do you have um, large scale battles working out? So for me, uh, I started looking at in, what I didn't want to have with my players, which which happens when you already throw a lot of. Uh, minis with the, with the big bigger boss around is that they either hit or they miss and then it's a lot of waiting for them to hit or miss mm -hmm. so it's a lot of focused on on one and one battle so to say um but instead i decided to cluster the, the monsters together let's say you have several goblins in there with uh with an armor class of what was it 15 and hp of seven but then you have four of them, and you call the four of them one unit. And their hit points, they 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 stack, so to say. As a, as a, and as soon as one player makes an attack, um, the damage transfers to the other goblins. As soon as he hits, which leads to giving the, the player at six level, especially the, the moment to feel like everybody's always thinking about Legolas and, and Gimli during these massive combats. So they could actually, with one attack, kill multiple opponents, like a sleep spell, so to say, would also have the same kind of rulings. But for me, that wasn't enough, to a certain extent, because why, why, would, why wouldn't complete an entire army focus on, on, on only your characters that are sitting at your table? Then it becomes a little bit more of the... Yeah, I'm the, I'm the dungeon master, and I want to uh, challenge my players. So I'm going to throw waves of, of minions at them, and they will increase in, in difficulty and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. So I, I decided, also with a little bit of help of the internet, to to go for challenges, which which makes more sense to a certain extent. So as soon as you have the, the first wave, as it were, which others use. You have the, the the first challenge, which is the front gate, mm -hmm. and the the front gate. That's the first challenge that presents itself. There there are creatures trying to breach through the front gate, which is daunting. Um, so your players are going to react to that. Um, however, when they are focused on that, another challenge presents itself, which could be arrows that are set on fire. And now the village is starting to catch fire, and this ch the second challenge presents itself, which means we need to either uh, quench that fire or kill the archers or figure out a way how to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And, well, if, if you give them several challenges, uh, and um, let's say they, they decide to forget about the ones at the front gate and only focus on the archers instead, um, then at, at some point they will breach through the front gate, wreaking havoc along the way, which which results in in well more deaths of the villagers, and that's something we don't want. So there's consequences of not dealing with 
the the challenges, but it's still the player choice, All and right. that's 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 what I kind of like to uh, have in my games as well when I run them. Mm-hmm. Uh, to have to have player consequences, as it were. Yep. And one th- on some of on some other aspects that I that I was curious about is it looks. It looks like you're planning on give, on giving advice on how to sp- on specific uses of inspiration and just ha- and just how to lean into it. Um, in your experience, was was inspiration was something that di- that um didn't come down but didn't come up as frequently as it could. Sorry, I, I don't think I understood your question uh, correctly. Could you repeat it, please? Um, one of the, one of the bullet points you have on the Kickstarter page is on GM advice and uh, and um, inspiration on on the flow of challenges. Uh, so something I'm curious about with that with that is in your, in your is how is I guess the best way for me to put it is is the idea is the idea of how an adventure flows and how you ta- and how you tackle that. The way that an adventure flows, um... uh, especially 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 since things like pu- things like puzzles and some and um, non combat oh, obstacles yeah. can can um, dr- can drag in certain situations. Well, it, it, I like to to uh, focus on on. The people that are sitting around my table, um, and obviously I don't know who is going to sit around your table. So, uh, <laughs> but for me, uh, always the people that were playing at mine, they some were focused on on battle. Yeah, I just want to kill shit, and others were more into uh, no, I want to actually talk to this person and learn more about the world. And others were, oh, is there something that I could steal, or is there like a hidden passageway, or uh, you know the, the three core pillars of, of D and D, pretty much, mm-hmm. uh, and I try to involve most of them into into uh, the adventure as well. So you could uh, involve pretty much all all the three core uh, uh, well interests of the players into your adventure itself. And regarding flow, um, I don't. I don't necessarily think a puzzle could be a drag. It, it depends a little bit on, on who's at your table, obviously. Um, regarding flow, I'm in more of a... How to put it? Um, more, more like a, a pace uh, of, of first there is a battle, afterwards there there's some investigation going on. During this investigation, you might encounter... A hidden passage, but it don't needs to be opened with a riddle or a puzzle, and that way you can have two sessions, uh, like right after another, or even in the same session, and you can still make it a, a, a wholesome adventure or, or session for everybody at the table. I think that's that's yeah. That, does that answer your question? Yeah, <laughs> I'm going a little bit all over the place. <laughs> uh, don't worry about going all over the place. That's kind of what that's kind of what we do around here <laughs> so i'd but what would it would be fair to me of me to say that a lot of a lot of, there's a lot of material within the adve- within the adventure to to e- to ease the ease the inevitable bookkeeping when it co- that a gm has to do since well a gm's going to have their going to have their work cut out for him as it is uh, yeah, there are obviously for for a GM. You when when I was running some adventures, um, what I hated at some point was that you always oh uh, the end the stats of this NPC are all the way in the back, or I want to just scribble something down, but I have this book in my hand at, as we speak at this encounter, and now I I can just write it in here, uh, which I did. Uh, I just wrote in, in, in the back of the encounter or just in, in the side a little bit about, oh, the, the, this bad guy got away or this uh, this person got killed instead while he was actually supposed to live and what are the consequences of that. Mm-hmm. And 
in order to to provide uh, a place in inside the book for 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 dungeon masters to actually write that stuff down or keep track of of the different monsters that are there and their hit points and initiative without having to open up so many different documents and I might double some information or make it a little bit shorter like commander slabs as well he obviously has a lot of different abilities and stats but if you if you look at the encounter itself there's pretty much one small table that explains how he how you can run it quickly and those kind of small things could make your life as a dungeon master a lot easier already yeah something else that i saw in the preview that i th i think is a godsend is ju is just at just adding it adding in a lot of the a lot of the characterization details for npcs but in particular the how to rp part part of it because a lot of times I've seen uh, NPCs in modules, and they'll you you'll usually be given a stat sheet and a bit and a bit of backstory with them, but very little on the personality because no matter how well you prepare it, um, the players are going to find a way to surprise you. It's just how the, it's just how these things shake out. <laughs> Third <Still> job. <laughs> There's a reason the phrase. There's a reason the phrase "no plan survives the first encounter" exists. <laughs> yeah, I can relate to that. There, there's been several monsters that I threw at my players that that were supposed to live, or wasn't supposed to be a battle because they were outmatched. And well, that happens. That's that's how it goes. <laughs> So, but what you said regarding the the, the 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 monster's desire and and how to role play or their descriptions and possibly even cinematic attacks, those those kind of things that just bring it bring the monster to life for 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 yourself as well. And I'm not saying you should do it this way. It's just more of an here's some inspirational thoughts. Here's some ideas that you could use in order to play this character, but um, but you could do it the way you want, obviously. There's artwork, you can see what it looks like, yet I put a description in there. You can also just show the artwork to your players, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. Now, with, with, that in, with that in mind, uh, something... Something else that I, fi I find I find kind of interesting is is just is just the visual approach that you had that you had, and when it came when it came to when it came to just getting the art getting the art done, um, how how did that how did you how did you reach out to your to your particular artist? Was it just putting out a call and see and seeing who responded or? Was there a different story? Uh, regarding my, my artist? Yeah. So I have an artist for this. Uh, he's, he's amazing. He does a really good job with, 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 with monsters. And um, obviously I give him a, a very thorough briefing and he just comes up with something pretty awesome already, which is not in a, not in a, in, in a f finishing way yet. Mm -hmm. But we then then I start to say, oh, maybe we should add a little bit of a banner to his, or he should have a, a flag in the background, or he should um, I don't know uh, his his upper leg needs to be stronger, and he needs to be upright since he's a commander leading forces, and that kind of feedback, mm -hmm. and and with that he just plays around even more, and then. Uh, he's he's also having a lot of fun doing this. Luckily, uh, because I give a lot of feedback. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that te that tends to be the best way to get to get something out of out of somebody on this kind of thing. I think so. Yeah. Well, we, obviously, as a as a creator, you have some sort of a vision. I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and it's 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 funny because half a year ago I was approaching uh, uh, people to to 
say, oh, could you give me a shout out or something like that in half a year? And but my product, um, I was still writing my first book, uh, including the the artwork and stuff that was still coming up. Mm-hmm. So uh, they said, well, I I don't really know Questness yet, and I don't really know. Um, uh, the product, and I don't have experience with the product. And I'm like, no, but but the vision that I have, it's 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 looking pretty amazing. And when they approach them now, and then they see the the the, the Kickstarter page, which with some of the artwork and uh, the way it looks, and the sample PDF, and then they're like, oh, okay, so this is what you actually envisioned half a year ago. Mm-hmm. And that's how it works as well with 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 your artist. Uh, we have some sample music in there, and I've spoken to to Nuno quite <laughs> quite sometimes. Um, same with No Man or with with Zana regarding the artwork, and it, it takes time to 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 get something in your from your mind on onto a piece of paper for other people also to enjoy, and uh, that's that's a really fun process. But it can also be uh, daunting and uh, tiring sometimes. Yeah. Now, as I hinted at before, this was this is technically your se- your second project. The first being um, Hell's Prison Escape. Yeah. Uh, what would you say were some of the learning experiences you had with that first book that you're up- that you're planning on applying to the second one? <sighs> some of the learnings. <laughs> well, luckily, you have a little bit of time. Um, so for the, for the first one, I only had one, one product, one tier, uh, which was a book of 14 euros and I did my own artwork and, um, actually the entire adventure itself came around because we were playing an adventure module, which already homebrewed so much on like you, you couldn't even recognize any of it. And then my players had a TPK uh, because they were new players and they were in <laughs> in a cave. And um, one of them was really anxious to, to kill something while others were negotiating. And then one ran off and cast Thunder Wave. So the entire cave was like, huh? what's that noise? <laughs> and then uh, they said, oh, no, we need to fight them all instead of negotiating, which didn't end well for them because even when they were fleeing they they came across more creatures and enemies and um so i gave them the option mm-hmm. um how do you how do you want to get how do you want to go about this and and that's how we started off with hell's prison escape but because of that i i, I wrote down a lot of things on paper um and I did most of it all by myself with my players. And for this one, I have people that I can brainstorm with. I have uh, actually so many more people working with me on this. And uh, that helps making even a stronger adventure. Um, and I, I learned a lot with artwork because... Uh, for my first one, yeah, <laughs> I I didn't do a very good job since I, I did it myself in the beginning. And I launched in December, which apparently is a no-go month for uh, Kickstarter. Um, and then I was uh, actually partnering up with Door Games and I found some cool, amazing writers that were willing to help out. Uh, got an editor and next thing I know, we're, you're just growing and developing. The, the, you deliver products of, of such a higher quality that you believe that your backers deserve. And you learn every step of the way. Oh, uh, I should have told them that to use this link uh, instead of kickstarter.com, or, um, which doesn't help because <laughs> if, you, if you tell someone to give you a shout out, yeah, just, go, just, just send them over to Kickstarter. And they say, yeah, just go to Kickstarter. Then you're like, oh, there's not even a link to my own page. Well, maybe we should add that next time. Uh, And there's constantly those small things 
there, there's just too many to, to count mm-hmm. uh, that have impacted both me and the story itself. Yeah. Now, with that, with that in mind, as as I understand it, you're sh- you are shooting for around around three around three hundred or so pages. Um, yeah, probably more. Yeah. Probably probably more if, if if you end up dipping into stretch goals. What are you shooting for as far as a release window? So because my release of my first book was pretty tight, um, I noticed also because I became a dad during that period, so everything changes. Um, I'm, I'm aiming for November, 2023, however, uh, I'm hoping and going to work really hard in order to get that delivered sooner. Um, I just don't like, don't like it when I have to, to, to give a backer update or Kickstarter update and tell my backers, uh, sorry guys, uh, or, or girls that, uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm still not done yet. I need another month. I'm still not done yet. I need another month, or I need another week, or any. I really hated that feeling, uh, and I it felt like I was letting down my backers as well because they were some of them were really hoping to get that adventure going since their campaign would have ended and it would be a nice way to start a new one, for example. And uh, if you if you have a hundred backers, then you get to know those kind of stories from from your backers as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's why I extended it for, for this one, not only because there's more coming up, um, but also because uh, to give myself a little bit more peace and quiet at home <laughs> and not just run myself down all the time. Mm-hmm. I can um, I can certainly get behind that. So, but with with all, and I I am going to be looking forward to seeing how it develops. But with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy and um brave the hell that is time zones, enjoying all <laughs> of the madness here. You're very welcome. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> That's a good saying. <laughs> and... Well, I, I want to thank you as well, Mildred. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a. I hope uh, you have a better idea of, of the adventure itself and my approach and the way I go about things. Uh, obviously, this is my second Kickstarter, so I'm not an expert yet, but I, I've learned a lot. And uh, I'm trying to. Oh no, I, I'm not not more. I'm more than trying. I'm actually getting towards the level of, of the big names with my books. So uh, I'm really proud of that, and uh, you can see that hopefully already in my in my landing page on Kickstarter. And I appreciate you reaching out. Mm-hmm. Yep. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody! <laughs>